you. Thank you. Um, so we wanted to do a show while we were here in New York, and we started talking about this about a week ago. And um, so I just, I would like to just take this moment to say thank you, not just to you guys, but also to Rough Trade who helped us um, help us out. They have, they have this beautiful venue, and they were able to put a show. Um, it's funny because. We've been talking a lot about the beginning of our career a lot. People ask us about it a lot. And, uh, you know, there was a time where even selling, like, a hunt, this is not like a, oh, my God, I used to walk up a hill with one shoe in the snow or anything like that. But that's true, actually. <laughs> not with one shoe, but with a windbreaker. I don't understand what was going on. But anyways, um, it's Canada. But, um, yeah, Canada! I'm so amazed that Tegan and I didn't lose, like, fingers, or we dressed really poorly in the winter. Anyways, but there was a time in our career where even selling, like, 100 tickets was so exciting, and I could, we were talking about this recently, that I can remember my only... People will always say, did you always want to do the Oscars? Like, did you always want to be able to hang out with Taylor Swift? And I'll be like, no, I just wanted to be able to get my tickets from Flight Center to go home for Christmas or whatever. Like, I just had, like, such, like, short goals of, like, what I wanted to accomplish. And one of the big things we always wanted to, um, you know, one of the things that we envied about other people, we would support bands all the time, and I would, I, we would play a set, and people would talk through our set, and then we would watch the band that we were opening for, and they would, you know, they would do this, like what we're doing right now, and I would just think, like, I just want people to listen to us. And, um, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, you know, the truth is, is that bands have it too easy now. It's like, you know, you should go out and really get punished for a few years. I mean, it just makes you very humble to have people be like, um, well, just here's a few things that people have said to us, just a couple off the top of my head. Um, uh, think of other people, um, is one that somebody once said to us when we were playing. Um, To be fair, we were in a mall, and I'm sure it was very grating. Yeah. Um, to be fair, a guy, that wasn't even the worst person. That same day, a person put a, a nickel or a quarter? Was it a quarter? Who knows? It was a nickel or a quarter. In American, it probably was like a cent. But um, they put it uh, inside of a sock, and then they threw it at us. So. <laughs> that was the highlight of the tour. It was, a BDSM mall. But anyways, um, yeah, so like weird shit would happen to us all the time and I would just think, God, all I want, like I, all the basic of what I wanted was just people who would stand in rapt attention. So I really, I never stop feeling uh, very lucky and grateful and, uh, and, and I mean it so sincerely, I, the fact that we could just put a show on sale yesterday and to be playing for you and hanging out with you is like, One of you takes your shoe off and puts a nickel in a sock and throws it at us. <laughs> Better be a nice fucking pair of shoes. Yeah, it's just don't do that. But um, anyways, yeah. So we've been talking a lot about the early part of our career, and uh, we sort of feel a strange. I feel weird when people bring up like we have been talking about it a lot, but people bring it up in the sense like, "Wow, you've been around for so long. <laughs> so are you guys so tired? Yeah. Do you have?" So so many records. <laughs> Do you guys feel like so over it? Like those kinds of comments. And uh, no, going. we don't. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. Yeah. My favorite. My favorite thing is when we, like, for the last few years. One of the big things that we struggled with was people would always go like, "So this is your second or third record," and we would be like, "No, fuck that. We've got so many records." And now people will be like, "So you've got your thirteenth record coming out?" I'll be like, "Slow down." <laughs> slow down. We are not that old, but, um, but we are. We are 35-year-old women. We're very mature. <laughs> I thought Tegan went down, and I'm like, she's old. She just has to lay down for a minute. It's fine. Anyways, 
We have this wonderful tech who just started working for us and at the time he's worked for us every night he's like I'm gonna put a towel and water and do you want anything else on stage and I'm like I've never drank water or touched the towel not once <laughs> not just in the time he's worked for us like literally have never touched a towel on stage and tonight I have all this goop on my hand so I just washed my hands with the towel in the water but I think right before I came on stage I said to Thank God for Hugo. Yeah. Um, anyway, the point that I was going to say is that people keep bringing up how long um, we've been doing this and how many records. And one of the cool things about having so many records and been around for so long is we've seen everything change. We've seen people stop buying CDs and start buying it on iTunes and then just forego that and then go back to vinyl and then want CDs again. And then, like, my cousin has a band and they make cassette tapes. Yeah! And and now apparently nobody gives a shit about any of that and they just stream it so I had to learn how to use Spotify which was cool and then, then people started talking to us about how you need to shazam things because you're, literally our career is just if you shazam a whole bunch then apparently that's going to help us so, um, and we keep learning all of these things and it's fascinating I feel like it's the first day of school every time we put a record out it's so invigorating and terrifying but the one thing that has remained the same is What's that, a beaver? <laughs> One thing that's remained exactly the same is that I feel there was a point during every single show that we played. Maybe there's been a couple really shitty ones where I haven't felt this way, but certainly for the last 10 years it's been consistent. At least once a night I have a moment in the show where I just, whether I hear you singing or something happens where I become very aware of you. Sometimes I have to like, you know, just be inside myself, but I become aware of you. And one thing that has not changed in all these years is that in that moment, I am so grateful that this is the career and the life that I got to have. And I feel... I don't, I don't really understand what's happening. I, I already said all the nice things, and now I feel no, like I you're don't. trying to say nicer things to them in a more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, in no, a more emotional way, and I don't understand, like, you have to, like, shed tears from these people? Like, I don't understand, like... Just this is like a thing between you and Hugo. Yeah. Like, oh, Hugo and I are taking a show on the road where I tell some really, really sad things, things while Hugo fixes things for me. <laughs> no, the point that I was going to try to make was just that, like, that in that moment where I feel so excited, I realize that we have a lot of ambition and a lot of goals, and we strive to do many, many big, good things. But the one thing that I never wanting to move away from is having this connection. And Sarah and I are so grateful. We really thought long and hard before this record came out about what our number one goal was for this record. And our number one goal we were calling, it's very cheesy, but I'll admit to it, is that we wanted to create a bridge directly to our audience. We didn't want to go out and support other bands. We didn't want to go out and do things that didn't feel good. We just wanted to do intimate shows and small shows and then bigger shows, but all headline and just connect to our audience. And if you want to buy the fucking record, you should. If you want to stream it or Shazam it, you should. But honestly, as long as you just come back at some point, even if it's 10 years from now, we really appreciate you guys listening to us and coming out and hanging out. for this record was, uh, <laughs> my ovaries are on their last leg so if anyone wants to just you know I'm willing to um, use my ovary to um, make your dream come true for me. my second goal with this record is to convince Sarah to stop bringing her fucking ovaries up on stage my third goal for this record was just that to you would just let me be myself and talk about my ovaries or just myself however I want to. My ovaries won't be around that lot. It's not going to be like, we're going to be doing our heritage tour when we're in our 50s. I'm going to be like, so anyways, my left ovary. That's just, all you're going to talk about when you're 50. That's all you're going to talk about. So wait, don't bring it up now. It's, I'm watching Downton Abbey right now and when I have to talk about women things. Ever, has everyone here seen it? Yeah. You know, like the doctor talks to the... Do you, I'm really bad with names. The, the guy who owns the castle or whatever. And <laughs> when he's like, the lady gets pregnant, the wife gets pregnant. I'm bad with names! I can barely remember your name most of the time. And so, and Great story. The guy who owns a castle. No, you guys know what I'm talking about, about, right? The, the yeah, yeah, duke or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma'am. <laughs> I can't remember. So the duke guy, he gets his older wife. She must be, I guess, she's like hella old. So she's probably like 40 or something. <laughs> And she gets pregnant late in life, or whatever, and the doctor is like, well, he's like, how did this happen, doctor? He's like, oi, how did this happen, or whatever. And then the doctor's like, no, no, Darren, Darren is 
Miss from the UK, would a duke who owned a castle ever say oi? No. Darren says no. Okay, so the doctor's like, do you want me to explain it to you? And then he's like, heavens no. And then he's like, I can, if you take a shot of whiskey, we can talk about women parts or And I'm like, that's you on stage. I turn into the duke where I'm like, no, don't talk about your ovaries.